Hello, my name is Dr. David Akombo. I'm an associate professor of music education at Jackson State University in Jackson, Mississippi, in the United States of America. My presentation today is entitled Music Across the Elementary School Curriculum A Spiral Pedagogy. Research has shown that music affects all developmental domains of children. It also nourishes the brain by building neural pathways through stimulation from all the five senses. For example, singing with children can stimulate both the right and the left side hemispheres of the brain. Music can also develop social competence and emotional well-being of, of all, all children. And we all know from research that they, they, with the hearing being the second sense to develop in the utero, the baby does begins early, uh, and that's what is uh, uh, proposed by Frederick Froebel as a play theory. When children are immersed in sounds and rhythms, they, can, they seemingly are pre-wired for music because they are born ready and expecting to move. The reason why music is important in, across the curriculum is because we have studied in the research that uh, the brain has been mapped and we find that there are so many sensory motor areas in the brain that affect all kinds of uh, the curriculum. For example, the eye movement, the hearing, and the parietal lobes that process the visual and the uh, visual association and, uh, and the temporal lobes that uh, cons are concerned with the feelings, affective domain and psychomotor domain. When the brain is engaged in all these aspects of music, we find that music is important in, across the curriculum. There are so many songs that can be used across the curriculum. Children all already know some of these songs from across the globe. We have work songs, we have uh, language songs, and so on and so forth. Music such as uh, uh, songs that can uh, inspire children to play together can also inspire them to learn other, other co co uh, cognitive aspects of the curriculum. For example, the song, the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be, and so on and so forth. We all know that mathematics can be a challenging for, uh, subject for students to understand because the concepts are abstract, uh, which uh, is the main reason it's important to provide visuals and manipulatives to students with fast teaching concepts. Musical notes can help teach fractions, for example, or changing instruments, but playing the same song can also help patterns, and using pitch can help with frequency and ratios. And in Afro-Caribbean, we have instruments, like the off instrument also, you can play to demonstrate fractions, and so on and so forth. We have counting songs, we have multiplication songs, we have songs that can teach the geometry, and so on so and so forth. We know that music can also play a major role in history. History is a subject that benefits greatly from having music as a, as a window into the cultural tradition, the historical events around the world. For example, a, a music educator can have students analyze the conditions people lived in at the time the music was composed. For example, Stephen Foster's songs at the American Gold Rush, or Benny Goodman's music, and the story of the Jewish immigrants, or African-American spirituals at the, uh, during slavery, and so on and so forth. So we find that music across the curriculum, particularly in history and culture, can enhance the content of music education in the world. STEM is a big deal for the 21st century, and a lot of students find difficulty in associating with STEM content. Science can benefit from songs that teach about the skeletal system, for example, or uh, incorporate uh, mnemonics to help students remember the food chain, for example, or climate change. Uh, music can also be the content for teaching about sound waves and hearing children uh, experience frequency in relation to pitch can enhance the STEM education as well. Music across the curriculum is very significant because we find it in literacy, uh, improving the student uh, being able to pick up musical patterns in structure of language, for example, uh, children are able to differentiate between pitches in words 
that sound similar but have different meanings. Those are tonal languages. A lot of languages from around the world are tonal. Chinese, for example, or African languages are tonal. Um, and children can, if, can uh, depict the pitches in that way. So, for example, um, the language of uh, the Luo people of uh, Kenya, the word kendo, kendo uh, can be tonal and it can be if inflected differently to mean many things. So if the children can sing a song that has kendo, that means uh, that's, that's, that's a stove. Kendo is a stove. Kendo, but if they sing it, whether they fluctuate the first syllable, kendo, that will be again. But if they fluctuate the first level above so that they have a, a tone or a semitone falling, kendo, that's to get married. So the children have to know the fluctuation of speech in tonal languages that music can also help understand the metaphor and explaining elements of story and character and setting, conflict and resolution of uh, using melodies and instruments, tempos and dynamics as a teaching, as a teaching lens into, into music. So, in general, as a music educators, we want to uh, uh, appropriately challenge each student, of course, encouraging higher order thinking skills while meeting state standards here in the United States. And I'm sure uh, many parts of the world have state standards in the, in, the, in, the, in the arts curriculum. But here in the United States, we have the state standards. In every state, we have the national standards as well, of course, organized by the National Association of Music, uh, F F uh, national, uh, Federation of Music Educators. Music is one tool to engage each student and provide a pathway uh, for connections and deeper understanding. Songs are essentially poems and have a lot of meaning packed into few words. Questions arise as to whether the author, uh, what the author means. Students' own experiences are considered from the perspective of that meaning. And this helps create an environment where students will want to uh, share what they are thinking and how they interpret that content from a musical standpoint or from a literary standpoint. This leads into a personal drive to do research and to understand uh, the author, what the, author, the authors are referring to when they compose their music or when they write their lyrics. Uh, in terms of the opera, for example, the libretti has to have meaning for the children and they can, they can interpret that in their own lives or in the lives of the history of the people who compose those opera. And so, uh, that is the presentation I have today, and I hope you have gleaned something from using music across the curriculum. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, I hope to see you at our next conference. Thank you.